The President of the United States delivered his first State of the Union address last night with a stirring rallying cry for the free world, declaring Russia's invasion of Ukraine as a proxy for the new duel between democracy and tyranny. Taking over the primetime slot on American television screens, President Joe Biden delivered an hour-long address. The first 11 minutes were dedicated to the war unfolding in Europe. He celebrated America's success in rallying Western allies and called the Russian leader out for nuclear saber-rattling and starting the biggest conflict in Europe since World War II. He hailed European allies for inflicting pain on the Russian economy and warned Vladimir Putin of more actions to come. To all Americans, I'll be honest with you, as I always promised I would be, a Russian dictator invading a foreign country has cost around the world. Putin's latest attack on Ukraine was premeditated and totally unprovoked. He rejected repeated, repeated efforts at diplomacy. He thought the West and NATO wouldn't respond. He thought he could divide us at home in this chamber and this nation. He thought he could divide us in Europe as well. But Putin was wrong. We are ready. We are united, and that's what we did. We stayed united along with 27 members of the European Union, including France, Germany, Italy, as well as countries like the United Kingdom, Canada, Japan, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and many others, even Switzerland, are inflicting pain on Russia and supporting the people of Ukraine. Putin is now isolated from the world more than he has ever been. Biden framed the Ukraine conflict as the beginning of a momentous struggle for freedoms threatened by dictators, underscoring one of the key themes of his presidency. Ukrainian flags were waved on the floor of Congress shortly after the president again spoke with Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky and expressed support for his struggle. Biden was speaking to an audience far beyond the lawmakers gathered in the room and Americans watching the speech on television. He called on lawmakers to stand and applaud Ukraine's ambassador to Washington, who was a guest of the Bidens for the speech. The Ukrainian ambassador to the United States is here tonight, sitting with the First Lady. Let each of us, if you're able to stand, stand and send an unmistakable signal to the world of Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She's bright, she's strong, and she's resolved. Yes. We, the United States of America, stand with the Ukrainian people. Well, let's talk now to Dr. Tatsiana Kulakevich. She is an assistant professor at the University of South Florida and a research fellow at USF's Institute on Russia. And she joins us live uh, from the Sunshine State of Florida. Uh, Dr. Kulakevich, stirring words, stirring imagery on the floor of Congress last night. But I didn't hear a single demand made of Vladimir Putin by the president. Uh, what did President Biden achieve last night? Well, uh, this address uh, by President Joe Biden is very important because uh, it, he um, he delivered uh, on his uh, achievements be, uh, during the term he served. So this address was... Um, towards uh, American people more than uh, towards uh, uh, the uh, uh, external powers and towards Vladimir Putin. Even though uh, Russian uh, TV official channels were uh, interpreting the address um, the way it was uh, uh, advantageous uh, for them, he tried to... Uh, um, to 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 kind of deliver the address that um, everything uh, he was doing uh, brought success and united uh, the Western powers, and that was the message. 
Ukrainian armed forces are going to find it very difficult to resist the Russian onslaught. Um, and it's absolutely apparent from everything that he said that he doesn't want to get drawn into a war with Russia that might end up going nuclear. But what does that do for Ukraine? I mean, at the end of the day, is the president essentially charting a course that will inevitably see him as being the man uh, on whose watch Ukraine was lost? Well, uh, I uh, have to agree here uh, because... Uh, even though we we see we should uh, um, uh, agree that uh, that the Western countries did unify, but that happens uh, with a delay, and a lot of uh, loud statements by uh, the United States President Joe Biden and the other um, powers they were very loud but um uh, they did not deliver immediately uh the uh, sanctions uh, by the united states unfortunately uh were very very um, weak when uh, president putin entered the ukrainian territory after he recognized the two breakaway regions and because the response was not um, uh, was was more uh, of a talk than walking the walk, he also he was encouraged more to proceed with his initial plan. And uh, it looks that uh, Vladimir Putin uh, expected that uh, it would be hard for the Western countries to unify first and then also to implement the sanctions and the punishments uh, these countries were promising. And that uh, what we uh, actually see these days. Um, and um, Ukraine has to convince the Western powers that it does want its own territory, that people of Ukraine are ready to die. Uh, it actually uh, essentially is buying time for the Western countries to unite and uh, show them that they don't have any other choice but um, uh, get together and one by one uh, join SWIFT, for example, that actually only started uh, being active today and that's already uh, almost a week of fighting. And um, still energy sector was not sanctioned and still uh, Russia has um, uh, gets uh, some some room of, for, for maneuver, even though it's already also we can say that it um, it miscalculated in uh, its speed of uh, the offensive that it uh, launched on the Ukraine. We